With the recent launch of Starship, we can start talking about some of the uses for carrying people inside of Starship. Specifically, I want to talk about how many people can fit inside of a Starship for various types of missions. There are three main mission types that Starship is likely to fill. The first one is a point-to-point -point Earth transportation where you're carrying humans from one city to another one. The second one is some kind of orbit or possibly even to the moon although the moon would take a little bit more resources than to orbit, it's still a fairly short voyage. And then there's the long duration stuff like sending humans to the planet Mars. Let's talk about what it would take to make each one of these types of missions work. For the first one, let's talk about point-to-point -point Earth transportation. The amount of volume that a starship will carry in roughly the same size as that of a 747 the cargo capacity is very very similar between the two vehicles in fact it's a little bit higher in starship but it makes perfect sense that it would be at least comparable the 747 can hold roughly 370 ish passengers by the time you add in the crew and whatnot you're getting pretty close to 400 people that seems like it at first glance would be a reasonable estimate for the number of people in a starship and you'd be able to carry their luggage you'd be able to do everything else because it has a similar capacity well there's a couple of things to note first of all you don't need to have like a galley you don't need to have really even bathrooms you're going to get on the thing and it's going to launch off and no matter where you're going you're going to be there in a matter of less than an hour you're not going to be able to move around probably during this time at all because you're on a freaking rocket that's going to go you're not going to want to be able to move around i kind of picture it like a roller coaster in that sense you're going to be strapped in the entire time and you just have to kind of stay put and make the best out of it so they won't have a lot of those types of facilities like you do on a commercial airplane so that will increase the room but what's going to decrease it is a little bit harder to explain one of the key things when you're talking about high g acceleration and kid you not a starship mission will have some very very high acceleration you want it to be what's called eyeballs in so basically it's pretty simple it's just like the name says your eyeballs are being pushed in that is a good type of acceleration to have so you're like strapped in you may be sitting down like kneeling a little bit but your back your chest is pointed straight in the direction of travel so that you're being pushed back your eyeballs are being pushed in so if you think a normal g-force will be eyeballs down like if you're decelerating from a jump then you're going to have a little bit higher g eyeballs down but it's still one of the better ways but not the best way but when you have a starship rocket you got two modes of acceleration that you're going to have to deal with it's very different than any other thing that's been out there the first one is is when you're on your way up you will be accelerating upward the along the direction of the rocket itself when you're doing that you're going to want to be strapped in so that you're laying down and facing upward that is going to give you the best kind of gravitational acceleration you're going to be eyeballs down force that way and you may have some pretty significant g-forces you're going on a long distance trip you may get up to three g's of acceleration that's a lot of acceleration and the, for astronauts people who train for this the acceleration they still want them to have it be eyeballs in but uh, it's something to be at least concerned of unique to any other type of rocket ship out there starship has a very different mode of deceleration when you're in a capsule the direction of deceleration is tends to be a long direction of motion interestingly enough the space shuttle which had two different profiles as well because the spaceship rotated between the two it actually had the same type of acceleration you could have a chair that was pointed in the same direction and you'd be perfectly perfectly fine because when you're moving along this way you're decelerating in that direction when you're moving up then you're decelerating in that direction so it comes to be the same direction of your accelerational force but for starship when you're decelerating you're moving along this direction 
So you're being pushed this way by air resistance, but you're in a different orientation. Rather than go through here, your acceleration is going through this direction. This is 90 degrees out of phase, and as a result, you just can't cram as many people in to a starship because you can't have such high gravitational acceleration from two different directions. It just won't work for a typical person. You're going to have to do some kind of rotation. Now, there are roller coasters that do this. There are roller coasters that you go strap in and they will sit you down, lay you down on the ground, or in some instances, they'll even rotate you and have you be facing the floor. Something like that, I think, is what's going to happen. Now, with a roller coaster, there's a little bit of difference. You'll have two cars that'll be side by side, but you don't want the cars to be able to rotate and hit each other. So you have to put some more space. You can actually put them much closer together. You just have to make sure that the heads aren't going to bonk the feet from behind them because that would be really, really nasty. As a result, you can be pressed in there a little bit more. But what's a little bit different is the seating in a Starship, no doubt, will be different. See, when I was first thinking this, I was thinking you were going to have an entire row and that row was going to rotate 90 degrees like about your section right here. So you were going to be facing you know, down and then you're going to go up like this. But I started realizing it would take up a lot less space if you did a sideways rotation. If you're sitting upright like this and then you rotate like this, you're not taking up nearly as much space to make that happen. And I think that that is what Starship is going to do. We haven't seen anything official on this, but it makes perfect sense that they would do something like that. By taking some calculations, taking a standard airline seat and having it be able to rotate 90 degrees so that your neighbor that's on your left, say, let's say you're on the rightmost seat, your neighbor on your left, when you rotate 90 degrees like this, then your neighbor will not be touching your knees, then you can get a kind of sense for this and they're going to have to probably come up with some pretty clever design. You may be in like a little capsule so that you don't bonk your legs out or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the first design for the seats in there are roller coaster designs, to be honest. But this rotating capsule, so you don't hit your neighbors when you're rotating through this maneuver, it would take a little bit more space than the width. I think instead of six in a line, you'd be able to fit four in a line. So you're going to lose about 50% of the capacity in a Starship compared to a 747. So you're going to lose about a third of your capacity by doing this compared to a 747. And as a result, I think that the capacity will go from about 400 people to maybe 250 to 300. You gain a little bit because you don't need some of those extra features, but they don't tend to take up a lot of space anyway. So we'll just go with 280 or so people. So if you take an estimated $2 million per launch, which they think that they'll be able to get that even lower, that would cost about $10,000, and this would be for a Super Heavy and Starship combined trip to get across the country with a healthy profit margin. If they can make that work, that would be absolutely fantastic. And it's possible they can bring that cost down by a quarter, which would reduce the ticket cost to $2,500 across the world. I would take that in a heartbeat. Just the sheer speed of it is incredible. If you're able to do this for a shorter trip that only needs a Starship, it doesn't need the super heavy booster, the cost goes down by maybe a quarter of the original cost because you're not needing nearly as much fuel and fuel is the biggest thing. And also you're not going to have as much damage to the heat shield as you would. So that cost would probably be on the order of a quarter of the cost, $2,500 to start with across the country type of trip. That's definitely on the expensive end, but it's in the realm of a first class ticket and for the speed and novelty, shoot, sign me up. I would totally do that once they actually are able to do that at least once in my life to see how that goes. If they reduce it by a quarter, $600 is not that terrible. Across the country, it usually costs around $300 when you're not in the COVID season. So $600 is totally reasonable. 
it'll open up a vast, vast amount of travel to the entire world. Now let's start talking about the orbital missions. Now, for a short-term orbital stay, you're going to be docking with some kind of a space station. You're going to want to be able to move around at the very least. So you're probably going to cut down the number of seats drastically. The number 100 has been tossed around for 100 people to orbit in a starship, and I think that is totally reasonable for a shortish duration mission. Even if you're going to the moon, you could think of it like a train transportation. And one of the cool things with going to the moon, you wouldn't have to do that seat rotation flip. Your seats could actually be in the same orientation and the seats are gonna be closer to a bed type of configuration anyways. But on the moon, you're gonna use your rockets to do all of the deceleration so you never have that side on impact that forces you to rotate by 90 degrees. You may even be able to fit more people on there as a result. Although you probably want to have the contingency to land back on Earth if there's ever an issue. Still, I think it's totally reasonable 100 people on there. You're going to want something that's closer to a train track model. You'll have some people who will want cabins. You'll have to have a much, much larger galley than you would typically. But for a transcontinental flight, it's not uncommon to be stuck in the same seat for 12 hours or longer and while it's not fun it's something that you can totally get used to and honestly if i'm going to be in space for 12 hours i'm going to get out of the seat and experience that zero gravity and go floating around just once because you gotta right you, you just gotta now when you're going to mars that's going to be a multi-month trip the shortest time span that's been talked about is three months and for the first ones, you're realistically going to be closer to six months. That's a long time to be in a seat. You may be comfortable in a fairly small space for a few days, but you're not going to want to be in that small of a space for a long time. And even 100 people, you basically take an entire row of a 747, and that's how much space that you have as a person for 100 people. And I'm only talking about half of the row. The other half that's on the other side of the aisle would also be their own entity. You're not going to want to do that for a long duration voyage. So when you're heading towards Mars, you're going to want a cabin. Everyone's going to be there. The closest model, I think, to that is the cruise ship model. Now, if you go on a budget cruise ship, so let's say Carnival, just because that's the one that I'm the most familiar with, You'll have a cabin that is pretty small and you'll have a bed. You will have a little nightstand dresser type of thing and you'll have a little bathroom that will be to yourself. The cabin space in a typical cruise liner these days is on the order of 30 cubic meters. So if you were going to just put the cabin alone without anything else, you're talking only being able to fit 30 people. Now, this isn't realistically going to work. First of all, you're not going to need as much space in space. You don't really care as much about the space above you. The typical sleeping quarters on the International Space Station are about one meter wide by one meter by two meters tall. They fit into a standard rack they work really great like that. They have four of them on the American side. The Russians use a little bit of different design, but that's how they're able to fit everyone in there. For your sleeping space, that seems reasonable. You may want a little bit of extra private room, but you're gonna have a lot more space that is crunched up than you would even on a cruise ship. I imagine that they'll have two of these that are put together. They'll have a little bit of a bathroom but you're gonna be pretty crammed in there, I think, if you're gonna fit 100 people on there like Elon Musk has talked about. If you think about it, 1,000 square meters, 100 people means 10 square meters. That means two meters by two meters by two meters. And that's how much space there is per person on the entire spacecraft. And you're stuck there for at least three months. 
that doesn't even take into account your seat, which granted with the rotational thing, your bed will probably double as your seat. That seems like a very, very crammed space. This actually violates the NASA guidelines for long duration trips, which suggests something on the order of 40 cubic meters. And I'm going to use cubic meters for those of you Americans out there. You can think of cubic yards and they're close enough where you can kind of get an idea. On a cruise ship, you have a whole lot of other things. I've actually taken the volume of some of these cruise ships that they're able to have their internal volume and per passenger, they typically have about half of it in their cabins and about half of it is the rest of the stuff that's there between the galleys for cooking food, the lounges, the entertainment venues that they have and so on and so forth. And I imagine there's going to be a fairly similar model for a starship. It just doesn't seem that realistic that you're going to cram that many people in. I think the early days where you're fitting about 12 people in per starship is about the most you would want to do for a six month voyage. At that point, everyone would have a hundred cubic meters of space. That's actually a decent amount of space for themselves. And you're going to be able to move around and get things done. A lot of that's going to be taken up by food and supplies too. In the early missions, probably half of the volume on there will be taken up by the supplies that they need in the early days. That's also something to keep in mind with the Starship missions. You may not need to carry all of the supplies for once you land there, but you definitely need to carry your food that you're going to eat on your way there. You need to carry the water. The water can be recycled. The air can be recycled, but you'll need a lot of stuff in there. So, I think for the early missions, I think 12 is a reasonable number. I think 30 to 40 people on a mission to Mars that's three to six months is fairly reasonable. And no doubt, like the airline industry, they'll try and cram people in more so that they can reduce the seat cost and be able to get more. But if you're going to be on that thing for three months and you're paying $200,000, you probably want at least a little bit of elbow room. So I don't really see ever having hundred people on a single starship. I could see if you have one of the double wide ones, that's 18 meters wide, like they're talking about. Yeah, no problem. hundred people, maybe even 150 people. But unless you're doing some really, really fancy hijinks, like hot bumping people where you're sharing your bedrooms with people at different times, it's just not going to work out so well, I think. And you know, it is a long trip and granted, I'm sure that when they get to that point, people are going to be more than willing to do it, but you still got to survive the voyage. Thank you guys much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Thank you to my discord members who helped me to vet this out and my patrons who helped to support me and everything. You guys are amazing. Thanks to everyone who likes and subscribes and until next time, keep on tracking. Take care guys.